Hello, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about mystery quilts. Now, some of us really enjoy mystery quilts, some of us don't enjoy them so much, but I've been running a few uh, free online mystery quilts for a while, and I usually run them over six months. So that's six parts, it's not strictly block of the month, it's six parts um, to make your quilt. Um, and so you can get the, the patterns, they're free during each month um, from my website, and my website is gourmetquilter.com, and you can go into one of the um, little tabs down the side is called mystery quilts so if you go and click on that it will take you to where the mystery quilt is loaded it only gets loaded each part gets loaded at the beginning of each month so hopefully on the first of march we'll go up part one and then you can download it for free and then on the first of april hopefully part two will go up etc etc and so over six months there'll be six parts if you've missed a month you can go in the following month and you can get your pattern but you will have to pay there's like a three dollar charge um, for that so um, it's a good idea to take it during the month that it's free now and I would ask you though not to print off lots of copies for other people but to ask them to go in and collect their own I would much prefer it was done that way rather than somebody printing off multiple copies um, so today I just thought I'd show you um, some of the fabrics that I've chosen for this quilt I've called this quilt the chain reaction quilt and here is the selection of fabrics that I have made for my quilt. So I've got them all ready to go. I've got to start cutting them shortly. So we're needing just small amounts of fabric, but first of all, I'll show you, this is my main background fabric. We need quite a lot of this one. The pattern will tell you all this information. You're going to need about two and a half uh, meters or two and three quarter yards of a main color. So you're obviously going to see quite a lot of that color. So you do need to like that color. So that's, um, that's the main colour that I've chosen and then there's uh, quite a few small pieces of fabric and I've, I'll be suggesting in the pattern that you need about a fat eighth. Now a fat eighth may not be available if you're trying to buy the fabrics, that's about a fat eighth, even that's a little bit more than we need. You only need small amounts of fabric but it was the way they were cut um, from the piece of fabric that we just needed a reasonable area. So you may have plenty of fabric in your stash, we're going to need um, 13 different colours um, of fabric and all that same amount of fabric for 12 of them. One of them you need a little bit more because we've used, and I've chosen my red for that, we've used some of that in the border. Um, so, you'll, so as I said, the pattern will be available for you to download and you can get that information from there. And then I have chosen another fabric um, which is actually going to be used also in the border and also for the binding and I've got a nice stripe there. I thought that was quite exciting. Um, so do have a look if you're interested in doing a mystery quilt. As I said, it will be re revealed over six parts um, and I'll just be showing you each month a little video that goes with it just to give you a little bit of encouragement. Um, but let me know how you're going. Um, send me photos if you'd like to. I'd love to see what you're doing. Maybe you'll be using different colors, etc. Um, so We'll, uh, we'll just get busy doing some cutting now. So I've been busy cutting with my fabrics. I'm sure you all know how to cut, so I haven't bored you with all that. Um, the pattern will give you the information that you need for the cutting for this part. And what we've done is we've cut some three inch squares from the main background color, and we've cut some two and a half inch squares. And then from our, main, from our 13 other colors, from each fabric, we've cut a couple of three inch squares and from each fabric we've cut a two and a half inch square. We've also cut a one and a half inch square and that's all written as I said in the instructions here for cutting and in your pattern that you've downloaded you'll find a sheet like this and the idea of this is that you can stick the one and a half inch square that you've just cut on to correspond so that, we, so that you'll know which number when I refer to a number you'll know which fabric it is that you're using for that number and so I've done that here with my fabrics you can see that uh, this is my orange that's in front there, stuck up here on my fabric D. And I've just glued them on with a little glue stick. And that's just a little handy reference for you so that later on you won't get confused because we will be using these um, letters at times for where you position your fabrics. So now I've just got to get busy sewing. So now for the sewing part of, of uh, the first part of this mystery quilt. Um, we're just going to make some half square triangles using our three inch squares of the plain, uh, sorry, our main background fabric 
and, and the three inch squares of the colours that we've already cut. So I've just got a couple here that I'm just going to quickly run through how to do the half, in, half square triangles. Um, we're going to draw a line just with a pencil or something diagonally from point to point across the square. Now because I'm using a light background I'm doing it on the light. If your other colours were lighter than your background well then you would draw it on that. And then so then we're going to place these on top. I've already drawn on this one. Place them on top. So right sides together of your fabrics and you've got that diagonal line right the way through there. And then we're just going to sew a quarter of an inch either side of that line. So I would suggest a scant quarter of an inch. So I'll quickly do that now just to run through it all with you. And we can chain piece these. We can just feed the next one in. So a quarter of an inch to one side of that drawn line. A scant quarter of an inch probably. And then we're going to come back and sew a scant quarter of an inch the other side of that drawn line so that you've got two lines of stitching approximately half an inch apart with a drawn line up the centre. And uh, there's a few more than these two to do of course but I just thought I'd show you on a couple. So I'm going to cut those apart now and now I'm going to cut them along that drawn line. And in actual fact, you can cut a couple at a time doing this. If you line them up with your points with your board, and then this point with that line, and also with the board, you'll find that they're sitting on that line. That line will be following a line through of the board, and you can actually lay your ruler over the top and just cut through both of those at once. I wouldn't do too many because there's room for them to move underneath, but a couple at a time is a great idea. So they're already cut in half now. So now I'm going to take those to the iron, or bring the iron to them in this case, and quickly press them. I'm going to press the seam towards the colour because I'm using a light main background colour. And now I just want to trim those. They just need to be trimmed down to measure two and a half inches. They'll be just a whisker over and possibly slightly wonky. So the idea of cutting them at three inches and then trimming them just a tiny bit at the end really makes it for a nice accurate square. And not so much the accuracy as then the ease of piecing with other fabric. So I'm just going to trim. So what I've done here, I've got a, a diagonal line on my ruler. So I'm going to line that up on my square and I'm going to make sure that my two and a half inch area fits within that square and then I'm just going to trim and as I said it may only be just a little whisker that you're trimming off but it's worth doing for a nice finish in the end. So I've done two sides and now I'm going to turn that around and again line that diagonal up and my two and a half inch marking that's on my ruler so that's straight along there, straight along there and that diagonal is along that seam line and trim the other two sides and that just trims those little corners off and everything and then so you I'll just trim this one last square to go just that little whisker off and then I'll show you where we're at for the end of part one of the mystery so that's those I've actually already prepared not most of mine ahead, just left a couple so that I could show you. So now I've got this whole pile of um, my half square triangles and it tells you in your pattern how many of those you need. Um, I'm pretty sure there's four of each colour in there. Um, we've still got our squares that we cut out and some other two and a half inch squares of the main background as well. And we've got our chart ready with all our fabrics on it. So we'll just pop those in a safe place. Perhaps you've got a nice little basket or a tray that you can keep things in. And that's part one done. So set them aside, ready for the next part next month. Thank you.